Why do I speak five languages? In this video, I will tell you how I learned these languages and I will be speaking all of them today. The title of this video could be seven languages, but I completely forgot two of the languages that I've learned. Spanish, I learned it for one year when I studied in the US, but now I only remember hola, yo soy Elena, and Chinese. I learned it for two years at the university, I even passed a certificate of some level, and now I can only say Ni hao, wo xu xi han yu. That's all I remember. That's what happens when you don't practice, when you don't speak the language at all. You forget it. That's what happened, unfortunately. So five languages it is. And the first language is English. English isn't my native language, as you might know and notice from my accent. Tell me in the comments what my accent sounds like, but <laughs> the name of my channel gives me away, though. I started to learn English when I was seven. I was at the second grade of school, so I learned it for 10 years of school. But I wouldn't say that it was a very productive learning, because even if you have the best teacher in the world, but you don't have the motivation to learn, you can't really make progress. And it was so boring for me, I didn't want to learn it, the classes were so annoying, so I skipped classes, I cheated on my homework, and during classes I was just chatting to my friend. Angelika, привет! <laughs> So for 10 years I was passing some tests, maybe I was even getting A grades at school, but I couldn't actually speak English. And only when I was about 16 years old I realized that in order to live the life that I wanted, to travel, to study abroad maybe, I need to speak English. And in order to enter the university in Moscow that I wanted, I needed to pass the English test at a very good level. So just in one year, I finally uh, improved the level in English significantly. I passed this test, then I was chosen as one of the uh, smartest child, not a child, but young person in Russia, and I was given a scholarship to study in the US for free, and that was the first time in my life, uh, I was 19, when I found myself in an English-speaking environment in the USA. Uh, I studied at the University of West Liberty in West Virginia. Almost heaven, West Virginia. So cool to be abroad in such an international atmosphere. Uh, I mean, the university was cool and the country, etc. But the best thing for me was just speaking English every day, finding myself with international students. Just wow. I was getting high, but I don't know if you say that in English. I wanted to translate this phrase, Yakai Fuyo, but Yakai Favala. Uh, from the Russian language, uh, but sometimes I don't think that you can translate it literally, but when I want to express my emotions, sometimes I only find a phrase in Russian and then I translate it, so sometimes on my channel you might hear some weird phrases or constructions, so you should know that I translated them from my head in Russian. <laughs> Today I use English for my work, my business, because all my clients are international and we speak English, I use it with my American friends, other friends, and today I think that in order to be a global citizen, you must know English. It's just impossible to travel comfortably and to find international friends if you don't speak this language. And I also use it for my YouTube channel. If I didn't speak English, this channel wouldn't exist. But the language that I use much more frequently than English is Ruski Yizik. 
Русский — это мой родной язык, я говорю на нем с самого детства, говорю с семьей, и даже если я нахожусь где-то за границей, я все равно постоянно использую русский язык, чтобы говорить с семьей, с друзьями, переписываюсь с друзьями всегда на русском, я всегда думаю на русском. Кстати, про иностранные языки я могу сказать, что мне по душе произношение какого-то языка или мне не нравится произношение вот этого языка. А про русский язык я не могу сказать, нравится он мне, не нравится. Я с ним родилась, он для меня настолько привычный и обычный, что я не могу сказать, как вообще даже звучит русский с точки зрения неносителя языка. Поэтому напишите в комментариях, как... Для вас звучит русский язык. Есть же мнение, что он звучит как жестко, сурово, вот как будто русские постоянно ругаются. Не знаю, правда это или нет, мне так не кажется. Еще говорят, что для иностранцев очень сложно выучить русский язык, потому что у нас не латиница, а кириллица. Правила и грамматика в русском языке просто разбейся лбом об стол. Наверное, это действительно так, потому что даже мы, русские, 11 лет... 11 лет мы изучаем русский язык в школе. Вы представляете, сколько там правил, чтобы их изучать 11 лет, и ты вроде как носитель языка. При том, что когда мы сдаем государственный экзамен в 11 классе, мы можем сдать его на низкий балл. И многие даже заваливают этот экзамен. Потому что в русском очень сложная грамматика. Вот как там ты пишешь, ты так не слышишь, и, и еще куча исключений, а еще у нас есть исключения из исключений, и даже исключения из исключений из исключений, это вот просто жесть, реально. Но я хочу вас успокоить, что вам не нужно вот этого всего учить, и то, как нас мучили, это на самом деле в жизни это особо не пригодилось, если вы просто хотите понимать, русские, говорить с русскими, вот туда вот углубляться вам не нужно. Хотя на самом деле я люблю, когда со мной общаются грамотные люди, чтобы мне писали все красиво, грамотно, лаконично, чтобы человек был таким начитанным. By the way, you can learn Russian in my Russian speaking club, and now we have a new project named Live Russian Talks, where you can talk to native speakers. It's one-on-one -on -one conversations where you can practice the real Russian, learn the most useful vocabulary, and learn a language having fun. So the link will be in the description. Все понятно, все хорошо. Okay. Okay. Да, mm -hmm. все отлично, хорошо, да. Uh, so, guys, today uh, we have uh, like one of uh, final speaking session. А, вообще, я сама тоже книжный червь, который зачитывается всей русской классикой. И я считаю, кстати, что русский следует выучить хотя бы просто для того, чтобы почитать русскую классику на русском. Это вот, это великолепно. Я просто зачитываюсь ей постоянно. Я от нее кайфую. И еще язык, от которого я тоже кайфую, итальяно. Анни 2020, 2021, о висуто в Италии, о студиато в университете статале в Милане, и кунди анки о студиато ла лингу итальяна в моем университете. Но потом о лашато в моем колледже. College dropout, typical YouTuber. E, sfortunatamente, anche ho smesso di studiare la lingua italiana. Ma qualche mese fa ho ricominciato a impararlo. E perché io studio la lingua che persone parlano solo in un paese del mondo e anche da qualche parte in Africa? Ma perché eh, il mio hobby, per la mia anima, e, e basta, e basta per me. Mi piace molto, mi piace molto questa lingua, la pronuncia. Eh, mi sente una persona diversa quando parlo questa lingua. Mi piace Italia, mi piace il cibo, mi piace la dolce vita, la cultura questa cultura, mi piacciono le persone, mi piacciono queste emozioni, emotions, 
uh, mi piacciono molto i ragazzi italiani <ride> ma vero, vero e non ho bisogno di questa lingua per lavoro lo studio solo come il mio hobby io non so il mio livello di italiano ma non è alto perché uso parole semplici non uso lessico complicato non uso costruzioni complicate io non so anche tutti i tempi in italiano ma questa lingua io non studio molto di grammatica io guardo serie tv io parlo con i persone su internet con i miei amici italiani non studio questa lingua con il manuale lo studio solo come il hobby e una lingua sapere una lingua e parlare non è mai un'abilità inutile uh, ti aiuta sempre a scoprire il mondo sviluppare il tuo cervello trovare nuovi amici eh, opportunità non è mai un'abilità inutile, io penso. Ma come qualsiasi abilità vorrei migliorare, voglio parlare meglio in italiano e penso che in questa lingua io studierò uh, di più, io voglio migliorare. Uh, ragazzi italiani, scrivete nei commenti, possiamo praticare insieme. Ma un'altra lingua che io anche parlo è francese. J'ai étudié le français pendant 4 ans, uh, quand j'ai fait mon baccalauréat à l'université de Moscou. Quand je parle français, les gars, je peux faire beaucoup d'erreurs parce que je n'ai pas parlé français et je n'ai pas pratiqué du tout euh, pendant 3 ou 4 ans. Et aussi, quand j'ai commencé à étudier la langue italienne, euh, j'ai commencé à confondre italien et français parce que il y a beaucoup de mots euh, qui sont trop similaires euh, alors euh, quand j'ai entré à l'université j'avais le choix de quelle langue je veux apprendre et sans réfléchir sans hésiter j'ai choisi français parce que c'était mon rêve depuis quand j'étais une petite enfant quand j'étais une petite jeune fille euh, j'ai regardé toujours euh, les films avec euh, les sœurs Olsen euh, je les adorais elles ont tellement euh, elles ont tellement drôle bien cool euh, elles avaient toujours euh, une vie tellement intéressante. Elles voyageaient beaucoup. Elles ont allé à Paris, à Londres, Rome, New York. Et je voulais être comme eux. Je voulais voyager comme eux. Et c'était quand j'étais tellement petit, quand j'ai eu ce rêve de voyager le monde. Et mon film le plus préféré était « Aventure à Paris ». Et je voulais tellement y aller. Et c'était mon rêve que le premier pays quand j'irais à l'Esther serait la France. Et les gars, <rire> j'ai visité plus de 20 pays. Et je ne suis jamais allée en France. Jamais. Et j'ai visité 20 pays. Et c'est parce que euh, dans ma tête, j'avais une idée stupide fixe que j'irais à Paris seulement avec une personne que j'aime beaucoup et que 
Ça serait un, un voyage tellement romantique, euh, mais je n'ai jamais trouvé euh, telle personne. Je ne suis jamais visité Paris et la France. Je pense que je suis adulte aujourd'hui. Euh, je dois me débarrasser de cette idée stupide, de cette idée fixe que je ne peux pas y aller seule ou quand je veux. Je pense que je dois y aller, vraiment. Je dois marcher dans les rues, euh, prendre plaisir à Paris. Pourquoi non? Ok, les gars, quand tu verras un vlog sur ma chaîne de Paris, sachez que je suis tellement heureuse. <rire> ok. Bichin Chetel, Tatar Tele. Avec Tatar Tele, Minem Touran Telem, Lakin, Minga Tatar Chasulia Shurga, Chitin Rak, Kuyen Rak, Min Barasunda Liam, M. Min Anna Yesh Kulan Mim. Voilà, Belen, je suis en charte, Bez Tatar Tele Sulia Shabes, Bez Iketel Sulia Shabes Rus Hem Tatar, Sez Bezne. Tanglap Tursagis, Ikete Lernen Kushulowen, Rushem Tatar, Ishetersis. Quand je suis là, 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 je à Kanchani, on a tam, bougez la dada, min i kittelne, aitem, rushem tatar, min suzlerne, koi suzlerne, on a tam. Tatar tele, turk tele, groupe sonakere, et koi wakut, min turk larne, kazakh larne, anglaim, koi suzlerne, em. Il y a des gens qui ont été très bien. Ils ont Min Aibat, Min Yorche, Sulash, Mim Dip. Touran, Telen, Ne, Yorche, Tip, Uran, Yorche, Tip, Sulasha, Bull, Tatar, Telen, Ne, Minem, Aniem, Minga, Aita. This was harder than I thought. So, these were five languages that I speak, the most comfortable I feel in Russian and in English. And I know that it's a shame that I don't speak my native, my other native language, Tatar, that well. Uh, even in English I feel much more convenient. But when I had a choice to invest my time in learning English or foreign languages or invest my time in Tatar, I found it much more useful and opening much more opportunities for me to learn foreign languages. But of course, I'm not saying that I'm losing connection with uh, my Tatar uh, culture, with my family. I still speak Tatar sometimes and I understand everything everything but it's hard for me to reply back and to speak it um, but definitely i want to learn more about my culture and on my channel you can also find some videos about who tatars are uh, how they live what holidays they have you can find these videos on my channel and if you ask me if i would like to learn some new foreign languages right now i don't want to start any new languages i just want to keep the same level of french at least the same level because i don't want to forget it 
Uh, I didn't speak it and I didn't practice at all for three or four years, but I think because before I had quite a high level in this language, I think I had B2, uh, I still remember it, even though I didn't practice it. And now I want to improve my Italian, definitely, so I will be working on that, not starting new languages. Uh, I don't think that I want to learn any European languages, any other European languages. If I would go to Spain or Latin America, etc., I would brush up my Spanish skills and I think that it would be much easier for me to memorize everything because I've already learned it and I could speak it quite well, but simply I forgot it. If I would go to China, I would um, brush up my <laughs> Chinese speaking skills. And recently I went to Tanzania and I fell in love with the language Swahili. It was so cool. I was <laughs> getting high when I was sitting there on Mount Kilimanjaro or somewhere and just hearing locals talk and just wow, I loved this language. Unaweze kuimba wimbo wa Kilimanjaro. Wimbo 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 wa Kilimanjaro. Wa Kilimanjaro. Yes. Unaweza kuimba wimbo wa Kilimanjaro. And I know that this language Swahili is spoken in many other African countries like 16 countries. And I definitely want to explore more of Africa, so maybe when I go to some other countries where they speak Swahili, I will want to improve this language. Now I know two songs <laughs> and about 50 words, just a little, but maybe that's a language that I would learn if I would start a new language, but for now just improve Italian and try to keep the level of my other languages. And in the comments write what languages you speak already, why, and what new languages you would like to start learning. Thank you for watching this video. As always, subscribe to my channel to support me, to help me with this difficult and complicated YouTube algorithm so that my work is appreciated. And I will see you soon. Bye. Пока. Arrivederci. Salut and Sobolos.